Good afternoon, Church of the Resurrection, and also uh, friends of Church of the Resurrection. I wanted to take a few moments this afternoon to talk with you a little bit about um, a subject that I might be helpful, that I thought might be helpful, which is um, dealing, dealing with unwanted thoughts. What can we do about those? Well, I think the first thing to say about unwanted thoughts is that we all have them, whatever it looks like for you. Um, it might be constantly having arguments with somebody in your mind, right? You're out there trying to enjoy mowing the yard and in your mind you're just rah, 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 arguing, arguing with someone. Or it might be being jealous about or coveting your neighbor's car or your neighbor's life. Or it might be something like being anxious and fearful. Um, fearful that you're going to contract the coronavirus and you're going to die tomorrow. <laughs> Well, where do these thoughts come from? And do we have any control over the thoughts that come into our minds? Well, to some extent, we do have control over them. I mean, if you don't watch the movie about the axe murderer, then you're probably not going to have the horrible scene from that movie in your mind. You never saw it in the first place. Uh, if you don't spend too much time on social media staring at your neighbor's new beach house that you really deserve, then you're probably less likely to find those envious thoughts uh, running, running in your head. If you don't sit all day and watch the tally of how many people have died up to the minute of COVID-19, then it might help you uh, not to dwell on those thoughts quite so much. But in other ways, we really don't have control over what thoughts come into our minds. I mean, thoughts can be suggested to our mind from the evil one, but usually those thoughts just come from our brain. And those thoughts are stored up in our brains for a number of reasons. And sometimes a thought that we might not even notice, something subconscious, sets off a response in our body. Our chest or our shoulders tighten or we get nauseous or our heart begins to beat faster. I read a book, um, last year called The Body Keeps the Score. And that book dealt with how we take stress and we actually tuck it away in different parts in our, of, our, of our bodies. And those things come back sometimes later in life. And you think, where did this come from? And it's, it's an, an unresolved issue that's been tucked away there. Well, what can we do then about these unwanted thoughts? There are a couple of things I think we try frequently. Uh, the first thing that we sometimes try is we just try not to think about it. Good luck with that. If, if I tell you right now, don't think about the color green, probably the only thing you're going to be able to think about is the color green. So trying not to think about it is probably not going to work very well. The second thing we sometimes do is we just roll up our sleeves and we fight against it, right? We enter the battle. As Christians, we might start praying or quoting Bible verses, and there's certainly a place for prayer and quoting Bible verses when it's done in the right way. But sometimes after we've been battling for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or even an hour, we're, we're just as weary, and the thought remains. So is there a better way? What can we do about these unwanted thoughts? Well, the first thing is to realize this. You are not your thoughts. You are not your feelings. That is the one of the most life-changing things that we can come to see. The best Christian teachers have told us that the two greatest needs we have in the spiritual life are to know God and to know ourselves. It takes most of us a long time to start to realize who we really are in Christ. And that true you, that person that St. Paul calls the inner man, exists at a much deeper, more solid, grounded level than just those thoughts that are running across your mind all day. Those thoughts are not you. They're just thoughts. They're just messages that are being sent out by your brain. One Christian teacher puts it like this. He says, imagine a mountain and around the top of the mountain, there is all kinds of weather. Sometimes there is bright sunshine. Sometimes there are cloudy gray skies. Sometimes there are fierce storms. Sometimes there are pleasant breezes. There is all kinds of weather. He says this, but you 
are not the weather. You are the mountain. The scripture says those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. Which means that you, the real you, can sit and observe the weather. You can watch it go on. You can say, you know, I'm really feeling anger right now, or I'm really feeling anxiety, or look at that thought that just occurred to me there. You can acknowledge the thought or the feeling, but you can know that it is not you, because you are the one who is acknowledging it. And you get to decide what to do. It's like being in a big ballroom, and all these thoughts and feelings are turning around and flowing by. You don't have a lot of say over who gets to come into the ballroom, but you do get to choose who to dance with. Do you want to enter that argument? Do you want to address that fear? So here are a few practical steps that are helpful in dealing with unwanted thoughts. Number one, just ask God to help you with this. Ask God to help you recognize those thoughts and messages, maybe even to recognize where they come from. You might be able to do this by yourself or you might get some help, either talking to a friend or a priest, a pastor or a counselor. So ask for God's help. Then, when this thought or feeling comes into your mind and enter, or enters the ballroom, don't panic. Just acknowledge it. Acknowledge it even in a friendly way. You know, hello, anxiety. I thought you might drop by this afternoon. Or, you know, hey, anger. Boy, it's been about a week since I saw you. Imagine finding you here. You know, you might say, I'm really feeling whatever right now. Or, here's the thought that came into my mind. You might even want to say it out loud. That's helpful for some people. And I'll say again, this in itself is a huge step. It will help you to see. It will help you to establish a little bit of distance or separation between yourself and these thoughts. And when that starts happening, you'll get a sense of power and strength. Acknowledge the feeling or the thought. Acknowledge it and then just refuse the dance. Decline the offer. I'm not going to enter this argument in my mind for the next 20 minutes. I'm not going to spend the next half hour trying to convince myself that I'm not going to die. Now you cannot make that thought or feeling leave the ballroom. You can't force it out of your mind or out of your body. You will have to let it be there probably for a while, but you don't have to engage it. You don't have to dance with it. Instead, you can finally give your attention to what you want to do and do it. Read a book, watch a movie, take a walk, jog, exercise, fold the clothes, work in the yard, call your friend, whatever you want to do. Now you say, but what if I do that and that thought or feeling is still there? Well, just let it be there. It probably will be there, at least for a while. If you wait for it to disappear before you take the next step, you won't take the next step. You'll remain paralyzed. But scientists have discovered, and they've got brain scans of people to back this up, that the more you follow those steps and then refocus and take the next step, the more your brain actually physically changes. It's kind of like a pathway through your yard. You know, if you have a, a path from your front door to the gate, and every day you open the door and you walk that path through the yard. What happens? Well, it makes a path. The grass dies there and you've got a well-worn path. But what if you open the door and you start taking a more roundabout way to the gate and you don't keep going back over the same old path? What happens? The grass grows over it, doesn't it? There's not a path there anymore. The more we have those arguments and entertain those fears in our minds over and over and over, the more well-worn that path will get. But the more we can stop it at the beginning and go a different way, the more it will grow back over and we will start to really heal. 
Now you probably won't do all of this perfectly tomorrow. If you do, God bless you. I'd like to set up a time to talk with you so that you can help me. But these are good steps to take. They're a start. There are other things also that are helpful. Maybe we can look at some of those later. But that's a place to start for now. May the Lord help you with that. May he help us with that. God be with you. Amen.